Hello, this is Rodman. This is going to be a new series we're starting. It's we're playing at Nobunaga's Ambition Sphere of Influence. Uh, it is a strategy game. Just came out, I believe, last Monday or something. I forget. But uh, we're going to be playing this. It is basically, like I said, a strategy game that takes place in Japan uh, during the Warring States period. Uh, here's all the scenarios you can start with. I'm just going to go ahead and start with the very earliest one. And now you get to choose what uh, what clan you want to control. I've only controlled so far uh, the Trisokabe clan because I'm used to playing what was it, Total War Shogun 2, and they they were my favorite clan in that one. So I started with them, but I'm going to play something different this time because you know I've already been doing it. Uh, I'm thinking either Hojo over here or where are they? Date. Date was my second favorite clan in Total War. So I'm debating which one. I think I'm just I kinda wanted to go Date and then I'll just like conquer all this area before pushing on this way. But Hojo is nice because it's got this big wide open area here, because you know, as you can see there's a lot of mountainous terrain. Especially over here too. But over here there's like it's nice and open so I can like expand over here. I'm, I'm debating. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go with Date. And figure out what to do from there. Okay, uh, I'm not going to do easy mode, because holy crap, they do, the AIs, they do like nothing. Not to you anyway. But, uh, yeah, the, in, in easy mode, basically the, the AIs just let you walk all over them. It's pretty pathetic. Let's see, so in this one, Basically, I'm not going to have any advantages. I'm going to be on pretty much even footing with the AI in terms of, you know, income, harvesting, soldier recovery, etc, etc, etc. And hopefully, with the AI aggression level mid, hopefully they'll actually, you know, do stuff. I mean, they conquer each other and stuff in low aggression level, but, like, hold on. Back over here, when I was at Choso Kabe, I pretty much conquered all this area. I, like, made these guys my vassal. These guys I made basically a permanent alliance with. And I started thinking on these guys, which at this point had like taken over a lot of big chunk over here. They basically let me just walk all over them. They I like attacked their city here and they did nothing. They just sat there and let me kill them. So again, hopefully on normal mode with mid aggression level, hopefully they actually do something. So let's go do that. Uh, this is option you can do. Create officers. I don't have any created officers. I mean, maybe. Uh, quests and events. Those are good. I like having those. Uh, lifespan. How long your officers live if they die of, long, of old age and stuff like that. Uh, battle death on. So they can die during battle. Fictional maidens will be born. I don't know. I'm not sure if I've seen any. Although the Trosso Kave have a lot of daughters. So. Uh, officer names. Common names or true names. I just leave the common names on because that's what they refer to them in the quests and the events, so it's just either that way. Main officers on or off, which is weird because even with it turned off, you can still make them officers, so I don't know. Uh, in game edit, I'll, I'll leave it on, although there's, I'm not going to use it, so I'm going to just turn it off there. So let's go. We're going to be the Date clan, which starts over here. Uh, we're doing normal difficulty mode because honestly, I kind of suck at the. Uh, Strategy games, but anyway, uh, let's get in there. Loading terrain. In we go. We. Yeah, and I've turned it to Japanese voices because they're probably slightly less annoying. I don't know. Okay, so here we go. Nothing happened. <laughs> so basically, we have two cities, or two castles, and a couple of fortresses. I forget how many exactly. But the, I'd noticed before that people were having trouble just figuring out which one was which, castles and uh, fortresses. Uh, what you do is you click this, the cities right here. This is a fortress. This is a uh, yeah, castle. Because there's quests that say to conquer a castle. This is what it means. It means these ones. These are the bigger ones. They'll have like eventually eight districts possibly. Oh, this one seems like it's pretty big. Oh, it probably just has two. Whatever. Uh, anyway, we're going to need to start working on stuff. Uh, let's see. We have 10 labor, which is what we use to uh, have work done. We have diplomacy. In fact, let's take a moment. Let's see. 
our disposition, disposition, disposition. There we go. We got some vassals. Looks like we got these other vassals. I think yes, vassals. We got another vassal, which is this one. Yes, there's a vassal. And we got a bunch of allies down this way. Just fine, because I think I'm gonna expand this way first. Basically, make it so nothing will attack me from behind, and then I can just start my conquest this way. I'll probably come down here because, like I said during the introduction, it's a whole bunch of nice, just empty space here. I mean, look at all this space. You know, all these crossroads, you can build like fortresses to have more little cities. But uh, I'll worry about them later. So, yeah, vassal, vassal. So, what I'll do is I'll probably conquer these guys first. <clears throat> this over here. We got, again, Fortress and Fortress, okay. Let's see, these guys are vassals, I think. No, they're not vassals. Oh, right, duh, right there. Let's see, where's the nearest city I can take? There's one. Darn it, hiccups. Frustrating. So, if we get a quest to take over a city, we'll probably try and beeline to this area right here. There's a fortress, 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 fortress. But yeah, later you, you're able to build your own fortresses instead of just relying on the ones that were uh, taken, that you take over. Even Matsu. He says allied. Oh, they're allied with people over there. I can take over that one if I wanted to. But anyway, I basically want to leave these four alone for. Basically, see, there's 12 turns per year, so two of them are going to be three years, two of them are four years of allies. You do not want to break alliances. It's very, very bad. I discovered once. But anyway, uh, diplomacy, not going to worry about that yet. Don't need to worry about that. I could, do need to do some surveys, so. That's, where are, where are all of my officers? See, there's five officers there. Let me turn that off. There we go. There's one officer, two officers here, one, two here. So we're gonna need to put some in these areas. First, let's move. Ah, there we go. Now I can actually see it easier. Play. We basically have two cities and three fortresses. The city is kind of. So we can transfer some people. Two here, from here. Let's see here. This is the overseer. This is the person that's currently taking care of the place. Loyalty blank like this. That's my leader. Um, two is basically. Uh, actually, I don't. I have to explore place. I don't need to. What am I thinking? Survey. There we go. Here, go ahead. Confirm. Yes, there we go. Oops. I should, I should do. We're going to do some surveys. Yo, and we're just looking, just basically looking at the area, seeing if there's anything useful there in the area. Continue, and last one over here. Let's see. Basically, we don't want to use anybody that's an overseer, because they're busy overseeing things. And continue. Actually, there's... Yeah, I'm gonna say that was dumb. Anyway, uh, there's that, and now we're gonna want to develop our areas. The develop basically, you got the three stats here: crops, crafts, and conscripts. Uh, crops increase how many supplies you get, which you need to uh, deploy troops; otherwise, they're gonna starve. Crafts are basically your income. Uh, you get the harvest. I should specify the harvest. Uh, you only get, I believe, it's in September, and it's actually getting pretty close. I think it's June. Yeah. So we start in June. So crops, you, you'll you get the, basically, this is your total over all of your uh, holdings. You're going to, yeah, so I would, in September right now, I would get 400, or 4,492 uh, grain, I guess it's called, in September, which that'll have to make that last the entire year. Uh, you can, like, buy some if you got the money, but, you know, anyway, moving on. Uh, crafts, those are your income, your gold income, which is up here. Basically, use that for pretty much everything. 
And so it's good to get that up as well. Conscripts, those are your soldiers. Now you'll notice uh, conscripts, they have this red bar here. That's because I don't have enough crops here to sustain the conscripts. So, in order to get more conscripts, I can get up to like up to that line, which is 249, which is equal to my crops. I could get increase the size of this by increasing crops. See, it moved up to here. So, they also offer suggestions, and I'm gonna. That's usually what I do. I just follow the suggestions. So there we go. We're going to increase crops. Basically, it'll go from 249 to 329. So, nice giant jump there. Uh, as as these numbers get higher and higher, it starts slowing down how much you can get per turn. Like, I think we're getting, what, 80 here? Like, once once it's... Later, we're going to expand the district, and these numbers have a higher max. It takes more and more turns to max them out. Like, at this point, later, if I had, like, over a 1,000 already... Uh, I might get like 20 instead of the 80 that I'm getting right now. But anyway, we're going to do that. Uh, they're working on a few. So we're going to do that. Here. We'll do that. Here. Again. Fields. They're also... this. These change depending on which month it is. Like, there are a lot of them are suggesting crops this year because it's going to be... Uh, September pretty soon, since, like I said, we are in June. And, as you'll notice, my labor has dropped down to zero. That's because every time we use develop, it uses two labor, which we'll get back at uh, once they're done, which this takes one month. So we'll get all ten back next month. Okay, so let's see. He has some rare goods. Oh, problem is, I'm not going to have much money. Uh, I can buy... I can buy that. Arigatou Yes, yes, yes. And I can give this to this. So oh, we have more than one treasure. Oh my god, we have grade 2 treasure. That's... I've never seen something like that amazing. Uh, grade 10 is the lowest, up to grade 2. Each uh, officer has loyalty. Blue is good. The blue, they won't betray you at all. Uh, green, they might... The enemy officers can come over and collude with them and convince them to not fight if they go to war. So they'll basically sit out for like three months, and they'll be totally useless to you. And if they go to red, that means they could actually betray you and get stolen by other people. So you want them at least green, but preferably in the blue. Now if I give them a, this guy a saddle cutter, it'll go up to 14, and then he won't betray me at all. So, there you go. Thank you so much, Ravage. You're welcome, no problem. Okay, so... Now we did that... We can start scouting enemy castles as well, since we're going to go this way, we might as well start checking out these places, although the problem is we have, like, nobody who can actually do anything. And yeah, we should be able to at least you know, this, tick this place out. So, and that's turn one, basically. We have all these other things I can do, like a peas. Yeah, there's little minor tribes. Uh, if you can get them to 80% support you, they'll help you in battle. If you get them up to 100%, it pretty much locks their support that way, and then they'll also offer you bonuses, like these two horse clans here. They would give me horses every couple months. I think it's once a year. I'm not sure what that one is. This one should give me gold. I can't remember what this one is either. You can... Let's see. Oops. There we go. Uh, we can look. This one is Tunnel. When attacking a castle, we'll send a group of siege experts reinforced no matter how far away your unit is. So when you're sieging a place, they'll come and support you. These ones give you money, like I said. This one, let's see. Number of control tries of films, all bases troop recovery rate increases. So basically, uh, basically as you see here, I clicked this planning info. It basically see, lets you see how many troops are currently stationed in every area. This one has 1769. If I marshaled them, deployed them, whatever, they would most of these would show up here. I'd probably get like 1,500 like right here, so 269 would stay behind. Once I use those up, this number doesn't immediately go back, and it would be like down here or something. And it would have to be refilled over time, which would take several months, so this would basically make it so that would fill up faster in every location. So basically what I do is I start by building up my forces a bit, plus I don't actually have a quest at the moment. 
Next month I should have a quest. There's all these things I can do here. But I might as well go through them all since I am kind of doing a teaching video here. So, civil. Uh, we got develop, which I already showed you. We have policies, which lets you enact different policies. Oh, shut up. Which... No Dragon Core, I've seen that one. Yeah, they each have a policy up here. Why can't I do this one? Oh! Why can't I remember at the same time if you take care greatly? Because I don't have muskets, that's why. Uh, if you start out on the very first one, not everybody has muskets. Actually, I don't think anybody has muskets. But anyway, uh, there's all these things you can do. They all have... Uh, I'm not actually going to act, act this yet. Basically, they have a merit, which gives, which is the positive benefit, and a demerit, which is a bad thing. This one increases trust in clans and the coalition. There's no coalitions yet, so there's absolutely no point in doing this one. Trust from clans outside the co coalition decreases. So basically, if you're in a coalition, this might be a good thing to have if you're fighting people. Uh, this Max Coalition Focus, that's the name. Max Loyalty, which is the loyalty of various towns, will increase by a certain amount, or decrease possibly. This will increase by 10. Uh, this is the progressive and conservative bar. I'm pretty close to conservative, but currently considered neutral. So, I would be able to enact this one, although if I go get any more conservative, I might not be able to keep it up. Basically, this increases the population quickly, and... Revolts have more often popularity is low, so, but it also increases max loyalty. So, basically, good if you manage to keep things away from your front, your uh, bases. But anyway, that's policies. Uh, trade is this guy. You can buy stuff. You can sell stuff. Uh, he has these treasures which you can give to use for various reasons. You can even sell your stuff, which can be useful. Like right now, I have quite a bit of grain, and I'm actually. I think I'm actually going to sell them, because I'm going to get a whole bunch in a bit, and I'm not planning on going to war. Not quite yet. This will give me a bunch of money. So let's do that. And you can only sell like a certain amount uh, per turn, per month, whatever. Uh, this is basically construction. You can increase labor to add a facility, which I, I can't do any of these yet. Well, also because I'm out of labor. But anyway, I'll show you those probably next turn. These are how you move your officers around, which is basically the back on. This is Diplomacy. Diplomacy, gain trust, which is the little numbers here. And you need trust in order to have them do stuff. And negotiate is how you use those points. Uh, gift will hopefully uh, increase the status like awe and normal. It increases how many diplomacy points or decreases if they're uh, unfriendly. Oops, too far out. I don't look, doesn't look like I have any negative things yet because I'm not that big yet. But uh, you can see when they're in blue letters like this, you would in it increases the number of uh, diplomacy points you get from doing diplomacy with them. Normal is just the default. There's also red numbers if they're like scared of you, if they hate you, whatever. Uh, but gift will increase their uh, this to up to friendly, I believe. Uh, let's see, coalition. I can't do that yet. I haven't actually tried it yet. Basically, if there's a large enemy nearby, you can form a coalition with a whole bunch of other, perhaps smaller tribes, to group up and gang up on them. Imperial Court is basically uh, not something you can fight on here, but you can get various uh, upgrades and stuff like that. Can we actually start doing that? I probably shouldn't. Yeah, I don't have anybody to send. But uh, you can get various titles, which increases the diplomacy you can do. Make it easier to do stuff. And title, which is you can't do until you're like basically super major and awesome. Uh, this is covert strategies, which you can use to appease tribes, like I said. Uh, assimilate tribes, if you don't need their bonuses, you can just get their population, period. Uh, entice, this is fun, because it looks like there's nobody nearby. Basically, if there's an officer nearby that is disloyal slightly, like I showed you earlier, with the... Uh, loyalty here. If they're green or even red, you can start uh, convincing them to backstab there. Oh, and this is how you use those points to do that. Okay, and finally, retainers, which is how you get more officers. Uh, employ. It, it's Occasionally you'll have Ronin that come into your territory. You can employ them and they become an officer. Easy. Uh, a point. 
you can set castle lords like this one right here is Munetomo Koyanagawa. I, I probably butchered that, but anyway. Uh, despite that, it basically it makes them the castle lord. They're controlling it. They're the ones in charge. Uh, rewards, as you saw me do that earlier, I gave this guy the saddle cut cutter. Is it a horse? I forget what it is. But anyway, that which increases their loyalty. It's nice. This one, you can teach. You, if you execute enemy officers or kill enemy officers that have a trait, uh, you can get a pool, put it in this pool, and then you can teach it to your officers. Uh, if you have a maiden, you can marry one of your maidens to an officer and make them kin, which has various bonuses, including loyalty. Uh, this one retires your current leader and gives leadership of a clan to another. Uh, and this one, you can just kick out officers if you're afraid they're going to betray you. This comes in later. You can grant ranks to officers that you no longer use. This, these ranks are the ones you get from the Imperial Court. Uh, the survey, this, as you saw me do it earlier, uh, checks out the area to see if there's anything there, which I'll show you. I'm assuming I'll find some scout. Uh, you'll check out nearby enemy castles and stuff like that and see how many troops are there. Otherwise, it just gives you an estimate. And provinces, which I haven't messed around with too much. Yeah, let's see. Deploy. This, if you don't want to just click here and deploy directly from there, uh, this can... Soldier tech now my leash. Yeah, this basically just gathers from in general. Uh, you can use this to request relief from allies that have up to 40 trust. This one calls a truce using a third clan. Oh, it's bigger. Peace uses the Imperial Court and Mediate. Eh, you can force other clans to, to a truce. So you can stop people from fighting. Invade, order, promise to fight. This basically. Uh, later, when you like, I was talking about provinces. You can make provinces. Basically, you start. Damn it! You start out with your main fortress here. Is my main one. It has a sphere of influence. That's the title of the game. And if you start expanding too wide, the cities and towns and stuff can be outside the sphere of influence, and you can't order them around. At that point, you need to make provinces, which will be controlled automatically. And you can give them orders, like invade this area and uh, assist this unit, just such, just such, 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 such. And this is uh, for coalition if you're in charge of the coalition that you've made, hopefully. Uh, you can tell people what to do. Anyway, that's going to be the first turn. And then, uh, so once you end your turn, it goes into the battle phase, which you'll see armies start to move around in this location. Uh, if you watch, since I had this place start taking stuff, see, there goes, they start building things. There goes, ooh, we found commons. That's the thing we found, iron. That'll be useful a lot later, once we start getting guns. Basically, you can see your cities start to expand when you tell them to develop. Okay, oh, there's an event happening. We're going to see what it is. Oh, this is a quest, I see. Prime this age of the war is making our town flourish and thrive. Our town lacks people and has not the wealth other lands do. First, for the sake of prosperity, our soldiers as well. For the sake of supporting our soldiers as well, let us bring prosperity to our town. Okay. And we'll get a quest. Which gives you minor rewards, but it's also a good semi-tutorial uh, of what you should be doing. And you, you can, you know, say no and just go on with it. But basically, raise Rifu Castle's crops to 450, raise Rifu Castle's crafts to 400, and constructs to 350, I believe. Yes. Looks like the same quest that you get as Choso Kabe. And then, beginning of the next turn, we see this is our income. We got a lot from trading all those. We got rid of all that stuff. And trade, we bought some stuff, we've been investigating, we're developing. Okay, secret path. So basically, there's another road there. Can find anything around here? Fountain at Moramari Castle. Uh, I think we can find anything. Hidden path, lumber, and other resources. Need Rifu. Cool. I actually never seen lumber. And we've scouted out a castle. All right. Now which one's Rifu? Leaves us. Yes. So this is the one we need to really focus on. To uh, to do that quest, which you can check. Oops, wrong one. Which you can check here. 
Salt and power. Yeah, this is the things we need to do. And note, you have five years to complete quests. I did not realize that the first time I did this. So we're going to need to do that. Uh, merchant of Sakai, which basically is the same as a regular merchant. Except it has, it's basically the bulk trader. You can use a whole lot more. Like twice as much or so. But I, have, I don't really have anything to, I need to buy. I don't have enough supplies to sell, so I'm not going to bother. Uh, now, for these things, uh, since I just skipped over these before because I just didn't have the labor to do it. This one you can add stuff. Add buildings, which looks like only here I can add stuff right now. Basically, every uh, zone here, that's actually pretty impressive since this is just... But anyway, uh, as, as these uh, zones here, you start out with three total, one of each. We got commercial, which is the money. We got the agricultural district, which is the crops, and military district, which is the uh, yeah, conscripts. So they each also can have buildings in them, which start out pretty low and just don't do too much. And you can decide what to upgrade them as. That's what these things are here. The resources we found earlier. Oh, damn it. There we go. Now, let's see. There's horses. There's come. Oh, that's for the building. There, where is it? Ooh, something else found here. It's a miner. I thought there was something else we found here. Maybe it was a different one. Anyway, uh, basically the resources let you build extra different buildings in the area. Which I can't show you at the moment because I can't build anything there. But anyway, uh, this one, let's see. You see the lines? That, that's the districts they can, they are connected to, and they can affect with like orchards, which makes adjacent districts suitable for crafts and crops, conscripts and crops. So if you plan your area out right, like let's see, this one suits is more suitable for crops. You can see over here on the. Uh, it gives you an estimate of how uh, suitable the areas are. These are better for crops. Or crafts, I mean. This one and this one. This one's better for crops. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is put uh, crops here. Crafts, crafts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an orchard here eventually. Uh, this will increase the maximum amount of crops we can uh, have here. And once we get the orchard, it'll increase crops and max crafts in adjacent districts, which are going to be these two over here. This one would as well, but it's military, district, so it doesn't count. So anyway, right now we're going to get canals. You know, actually don't have anybody here that can do anything at the moment. But I moved offices around. Did I not? Oh my god, I don't think I did. Okay, well, we're going to have to move some offices around. You go down here. I'll have to go through stats in the next episode, but I don't have enough time to do that in the moment. But uh, your officers have different stats. Uh, if you're going to stay there, this guy's going to go over here. There we go. Okay, uh, anyway, and we'll just go ahead and develop. Uh, you saw me earlier, like I said, I always, pretty much always just go with the suggestions up here. These are just agriculture, which is this one. And if you want to do it easier, orders, suggestions, boom. All of them just use the suggestions. Now this is the only one that's increasing conscripts. The rest are doing agriculture. Okay. So that's the easier way to do that. Uh, and I think that's going to be it. Oh, I'm send out somebody to scout really quick. Yeah, we scouted this place out. 997 troops currently stationed there. Let's do this one. You go check out that one. And that, I think that's going to be it for my episode. we got one more turn left. Let's go ahead and end the turn. Let it go ahead and finish this. See if anybody's going to fight me. Probably not. Uh, they tend to be pretty passive in the beginning, because everybody's going to be building up their uh, cities and stuff. Uh, you can see stuff here. Our officers moved. We added a workshop in Suginimone. Castle to growth, that's one of the basic buildings. And Onezawa's castle's comments can be changed, and there's something else. There. And here's our expenses and income. We got about 500 gold. I'm working on castle. Scouted, and let's see. Castle already experience and all that. I finished scouting. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. 
Okay, so I think that's going to be it for this episode. I'll go over officers and stuff in the next one. And I'm probably going to have this series replace the, uh, the Child of Light series that I was doing. Oh, that was weird. But anyway, uh, the Child of Light series, since I think it's pretty much wrapped up now. Uh, hopefully I remember to add this video afterwards so people don't accidentally do that and get spoilers. But anyway, uh, yes, thanks for watching and hopefully this becomes a popular series. If not, oh well, big deal. Not too surprising since I'm kind of a noob at this. But anyway, uh, I will see you guys in the next episode. Take care now. Bye bye.